So everyone online, hello, hello, can you see me? Can you see me? Hi, you can see me. Yay, we have liftoff. Happy full moon, happy solstice, happy full moon, happy solstice. This isn't going to happen again until 54? 54? Yeah. You know what? I don't know where I'm going to be. Uh, I'm not going to be right here. Hopefully I'll still be somewhere with the magic and I'm being cute. But I, it'll probably be live from my convalescent. Um, <laughs> wherever my dear children have decided to place me. Um, I have a little bit of a sarcastic sense of humor. But we have to celebrate it because this doesn't happen very often. And it's, it was really cute. Uh, my mom this morning said, so tell me, dear, why, um, why would today be, be special for your people? <laughs> and I said, well, my, my people um, really like to celebrate anything. And then when we have a full moon with a, with a high, high holiday, like Litha, um, or midsummer or summer solstice, however you choose to think about it, um, my people get really extra excited. So then we get together, we get extra excited, excited together. And we're going to do that tonight. So anyway, very cute. Very cute. So for those of you who are wondering, when will my family ever understand? <laughs> if you have a family who understands, bless you. You are very, very fortunate. My mom tries, but it's still a your people situation. <laughs> my tribe. Okay, I know. So I'm excited too. The energy is just, I wish you could see. Our room is full to capacity. I literally don't think we could fit anybody else in the space. We are, we are full here. I'm guessing about 100 people in the room and a whole, whole bunch of you online, and so I'm, I'm thrilled to have you here. Thank you. I told everybody in the room I feel like, a, like, a, um, like I'm on an airplane where they tell you, you have many choices when it comes to flying, and we're so pleased that you chose Southwest or whatever tonight. It's, you have many choices of where to spend your solstice. Thank you for choosing to spend your solstice with me. Um, we have uh, Mars going direct in two days. Do you know what Mars retrograde has meant? So when Mars is direct, you're able to take action in your life. When Mars is retrograde, every step you take feels like walking in molasses. Have you felt that for the past couple of months? It's like, and then you get to a point where it's like, I give up. You know what I mean? Like, I, who, why, why? I mean, you should still go to work and do the things and, like, take your kids to school. But there's a little bit of, like, what am I even doing? Two days. Yeah, uh, we call it shitty pickles in my magical sabbatical <laughs> class. So if you've been stuck in a jar of shitty pickles, we're about to like take the lid off the jar. You don't have to worry about it anymore. So um, two more days. So here's what you can look forward to. We're gonna have, um, we're just gonna be on the on the you know on the dark side of the solstice, and we're gonna have Mars go direct. And I swear to you, it's gonna be a slingshot. And so part of what I'm doing tonight as our ceremony and if you have a ribbon it would be really great because we're going to do a ribbon ceremony we put that on the event page just to prep you and i have them here live for people in person setting intentions tonight is really important and not for today or tomorrow but for the fact that mars is about to go direct and so it's sort of like pulling the slingshot back and then it's going to go bing, and all of a sudden you're going to think like all that work i've been doing i finally have momentum and it's going to feel like you've been rewarded all of a sudden. This is seriously what's going to happen in the next couple of days, because it's happened before when Mars goes direct. You're going to feel like, wow, what did I do to deserve all of this momentum and action and energy? And it's just all the work you've been doing that didn't pay off over the last three or four months. Okay? It is, there are always a reward. There is always a reward. But sometimes you have to wait for it. And that's why we call it shitty pickles. No more shitty pickles. Um, okay, so we have full moon in Sagittarius. She's real happy here, the moon. Um, the moon, it's a fire sign for a water planet, but we are have a fire holiday. So this is a really neat placement, except the energy today has been um, rambunctious, right? Have you felt kind of like, like you couldn't get relaxed or settled? I kept trying to eat today to ground myself, but I just couldn't. And it's like, how many more meals am I going to try this with? So I did stop eating eventually. Um, <laughs> Like maybe if I sell some almonds, that didn't work. Maybe if I sell some chicken, maybe that'll work. So there's no way of grounding this energy. This is high fire energy on a high holiday, and you just gotta roll with it and love it because it'll be gone in a minute. And here in Los Angeles, it's literally 3,000 degrees outside. <laughs> <laughs> we are all literally cooking on the inside right now. So, um, anyway, it's been a fun day. If you have questions, let us know as we go along. 
Um, we have a, quite a few people in the room who are new to uh, this work with me. And if you're new online, I would love to, to know that too, so I can welcome you to the circle. And then there's a whole host of people, because I can see your names in the feed and I can see your faces here, who've been with me for the whole four years we've been doing these full moon rituals. I haven't missed a full moon in four years. So if you love tonight and you're new, you can go to YouTube and watch years and years and years of full moon rituals. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not necessarily what you should do in your free time, but if you get really bored, you could do like a marathon full moon ritual thing and, and enjoy that. Yeah, um, the fade's going so fast, but Rianne says, crazy waves of crying and eating and anxiety. Sounds like today, pretty much. Okay, um, we are working with Asherah tonight, and I have a little bit to tell you about Asherah, so get excited about that. Uh, Asherah is the queen of heaven, and she is mentioned more than a dozen times in the Old Testament of the Bible, but not directly. Her name was removed, okay? But there are many places in the Old Testament where instead of I, it's we, the voice of God, okay? So um, work with this tonight as sort of historical information, because a lot of the work that I did in preparing for tonight was actually to go back to the Hebrew. And I spent time translating Hebrew scriptures from the Old Testament to prepare. Because I take this work really seriously. It's not, it's not um, a flighty thing to work with a goddess. For me, it's sort of like trying to inhabit her space and figure out her historical context. Like what was happening? Why do we not know a lot about Asherah? And when I made these decisions about the goddesses for the year, my team was like, Asherah? Really? And even you may have said, like, well, you know, I'll go with her on this, but like, what's happening right now? Um, whereas Asherah is actually one of the most important goddesses. I mean, she is the mother goddess. <laughs> when I tell you who she is, because she's a goddess of many faces, Siren, hey, Siren. Um, that may be going off all night long because it's so hot outside. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised, so bear with me. Um, she's the goddess of many faces. When I tell you what her other names are, then you're going to smile and go, I get it. I get why she chose this person. So I'm really excited to work with you with her. And then next month, it's Frigg. <laughs> um, Frigg is the wife of Odin, and we are actually celebrating both Frigg and Odin. For the first time, I've made a pair of candles for the sets for both. Because Odin is so important to me, the Norse pantheon is extremely important in my practice. It is one of the most grounded, powerful, um, uh, impactful pantheons in all of our study of metaphysics. So I was, if we had been doing gods, Odin would have been an obvious one for me. Didn't they work with Odin? Well, I mean, okay. Would have been an obvious choice for me if we were doing gods, um, and we may do gods at some point. As I take you into the Norse pantheon, um, it's a whole different level of magic. It's very deep. We're going to be talking about runes. I'm even going to do an activity during our ritual next month where I, where I throw runes for you live. Um, so there's a lot to look forward to next month as we journey north to explore the Norse pantheon together. Okay, so any questions before we, before we begin? online or in the room? I know. Frigg. We've already worked with Freya. Um, so Frigg, you know, it's an interesting journey because Asherah is the mother of, or the wife of God, okay? She is the Elat, which means goddess in Hebrew, to the El, or Elohim, which is God in Hebrew. Um, I'm just smudging you real quick. Maybe you need it, Maybe you need it again. <laughs> um, she is the Elot to the El in the um, Old Testament. Uh, Frigg is the, the wife of Odin. She is the consort to the god there. So there's a really neat um, uh, overlay there. Does anybody know who the counterpart of all of this is in the Greek pantheon? Who is the main god and who is his wife? That's right, Zeus and Hera. Anybody know who this is in the Egyptian pantheon? Like goddess pop quiz time. Isis and Osiris. Yes, who became king and queen of the underworld. So we have, you know, history and mythology and, and metaphysics is so fascinating to me because it's just inflection. It's everywhere. The same, the same, you know, groupings and connections are everywhere. We just have to draw the line. And that's really become my life's work is like tracing these connections across the different pantheons is very powerful. Okay, so we're going to be working with candle tonight, Asherah perfume, which I'm going to pass mine around. Not Frigg, I need to wait. Frigg is real good though. Um, I hope you've enjoyed working with Asherah perfume. I'm going to pass her to my left. And then Asherah stones, 
which are uh, beautiful titanium amethyst and lodolite, also known as garden quartz. Because um, above all, this is really to represent the dreamy, ethereal, crown chakra, spirit connection of Asherah. This is to represent her healing and transformational capabilities. And that's why we're working with her blessing tonight as well. Okay. And then in her, in this little tin of herbs, which I recommend you use as a tea, but you can also use it as an incense, is sacred blue lotus. Um, don't, in, don't over inhale unless you want to relax. I'm not responsible for how relaxed you get. It won't take you all the way to Funky Town, but yeah. <laughs> it won't. I have things in the building that could take you to Funky Town. That is not one of them. But um, let's just say there have been some stressful afternoons here where a little bit of blue lotus was burned and better moods were had. So that does happen sometimes. Okay, yeah, it's interesting. Julie says that the um, the lodolite feels like a portal stone, and I think that's a really accurate description of it. Um, some people do call it shaman's dream stone because you can see. You can see a whole universe in each piece. Each piece is completely different. I was really excited. You know, it's this is this would excite me, but maybe not you, but it's actually really hard to find lodolite this size. Um, so we had to special order this at Sage Goddess just to have this for the kit. I've only ever had little small pieces like that. So to find these huge jumbo one-inch uh, pieces of low light was quite a treat. So I was excited about that for the kit. Okay. All right. Ooh. So let me talk to you a little bit about Asherah, if I can. So Asherah is the great mother. And like I said, she is the Elot to the El, the goddess or goddess, mother goddess to the god. Um, she comes from the Canaanite tradition. Okay, so I'm going to trace the traditions and tell you the names. And what's really interesting is Asherah, sort of the root word of Asherah means happy and blessing in Hebrew. Okay, but her name got distorted. Okay, as soon as you add a T, stay with me for a second because this is a little complicated. As soon as you add a T to her name, um, which happened when we went from Asherah to Asertu, okay, which is the Hittite connection. Same same goddess, different tradition, okay? As soon as we add the T, the meaning of the word in Hebrew goes from blessing and happiness to distraction, okay? Think of the word astray. Isn't that interesting? What do we think Eve did to Adam? Do you see it? It gives me chills all over, right? Led him astray. So whereas, you know, and, and you have to think, and I, by the way, I was raised Christian and still have a very strong Christian foundation, so I'm not at all critical of the traditions. But I think it's really fascinating how women, the, the woman, is conceived of in the major religious and spiritual traditions as somebody who has the power, the threat to be able to, to lead us astray, right? Not able to use the fruit of the tree of wisdom for good, but instead to use the fruit of the tree of wisdom and knowledge for, for evil, right? Okay, so we go from the Canaanite tradition with Asherah. Is this interesting to you, by the way? I hope it is. Okay, so stay with me. Um, Asherah, Canaanite tradition, the Hittite tradition, she becomes Aser II. Then in the Phoenician tradition, she becomes Astarte. Is that a familiar name to you? Chills all over. Okay, that's her. Still with the T, so we've gone from happiness and blessing to distraction. Okay. Then in Arabic, she becomes Atherat. Weaving, weaving, weaving. In Greek, she becomes Athena. Okay. In in Akkadian, <clears throat> she becomes Asratum, wife of Amaru, who was the chief god, chief figure, religious figure of Babylon. Okay, and we all know what happened with Babylon. Then she continues to be inflected. Who do you think she becomes next? Anybody want to guess? Ishtar. That's right. Who guessed that? That's a very, very good guess. And then she inflects one more time to become, still with an I, Inanna. One goddess. Is that amazing? Right? It's like it's like just locks on doors and locks on doors and locks on doors and locks on doors. They're all the same goddess. And what is Ishtar really known for? Huh? Well, but what is her, she was primarily associated with one thing. Say it again. 
fertility, but also sex. Okay. So here, so here's what's really interesting. A lot of these, a lot of these goddesses became associated with sex. Um, and you have to remember, in the ancient traditions, and I'm not saying this to be funny or make light of it, but in the ancient traditions, um, a woman who we would consider a prostitute today was actually a very powerful person. Um, she was considered someone who could channel the divine and connect with male energy and receive the male energy and be a vessel and continue to hold all of that. So it was actually a very powerful role to be a woman who, whose job in the temples was to be a vessel. Okay, again, no judgment, just sort of putting that out there. Um, but I do think it's interesting how we go from, you know, consort of God to I play with snakes and have sex. <laughs> okay. Um, that's like the honey badger. I just did the honey badger version of biblical history for you. <laughs> I really did that just now. But it's true. And it's a little disturbing. Now, it was really interesting because when I, I am from, uh, on my father's side, from Crete and from the Minoan civilization. And the first thing my aunt ever gave me as a child was, was a necklace. I was two. Um, my mom thought it was very inappropriate. Of the snake goddess. Yeah, the goddess holding the snake. And that is her. I mean, she's inflected. The same goddess is inflected in the Minoan tradition, which was a highly matriarchal society. So this, this power of the woman and this power of the goddess was eventually really subsumed and seen only as a power of a god, of one god. It did not have a female face. Um, so, and people will say, well, we have Mary. Almost like a consolation prize. Um, what I want to say to you about this, before we start to really work with Ashford and go into our meditation is, I want you to connect with some aspect of this tonight, male or female, okay? <laughs> I want, because if you're a man in this lifetime, you've lived as a woman before. <laughs> Sorry, but you kind of can't get away from it. I mean, maybe not, but if you haven't, you're going to. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can get excited about that. I think there's there's a way for all of us to connect with this energy. And I really the question I'm going to ask you, and maybe journal about it later, or just you know hold the question while you meditate tonight is, where is your power? Do you know, like when you think about these these matriarchal archal archetypes and these faces of the divine feminine, and how much women really are a part of the creation story, the Judeo-Christian creation story was sort of mind blowing, right? Um, how does that make you feel? And where do you find your power? Um, do you find your power in knowledge and wisdom? Which is very scary. It's always been scary for, for people to have wisdom in their hands. It's been considered a threat, right? Do you find your knowledge, your, your power in wisdom? Do you find your power in your sensuality? Do you find your power in your service to others? Do you find your power in where? You know? And you don't have to answer that, but I want you to think about it tonight. Because I really think part of my mission with these goddesses this year is to get you to sit up a little straighter. You know, tired of seeing women, you know, sort of feeling like they, they only feel beautiful if society says they're beautiful. They only feel powerful if someone else is, is stroking their ego. This is in you. You don't need anybody else to tell you anything. Your power is within you. And I think that's a huge message from these goddesses of the year, from Asherah in particular, um, to take back our powers, to reclaim that for ourselves. History will do whatever it wants with us. Make us look like we play the snakes and have sex. Um, but we have to remember where our place is rightfully in the universe. Okay. Any questions about any of that? That was like a year of history in 10 minutes. Yeah? Okay, cool. There's power in you. It may need a reboot. That's okay. Reboot it. If there's a day to do it, it's today. You have the most hours of sunlight if you're in the northern hem, which you're going to have all year long. Um, if you would like to uh, you know, before the sun goes down, put some of your stones out under sunlight. Solar charging is just as important as lunar charging, so I would recommend that you put your sun, some of your stones out, even if it's just a single quartz point, you know, like just get a quartz point out there, program it to return your power to you, put it under the sun, then leave it out tonight under that full moon, and start working with that as a power talisman. I like that idea, I love it too. Okay, so I want you to roll your shoulders back, Get into a nice, comfortable position. You don't have to lay down. Just get comfortable with me for a minute. Let's take a nice, deep, cleansing breath together as a group. When you're ready, go ahead and inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Get all the air out. So good. 
and A. Just stay in that position. You might put your hands on your knees with your palms facing up. I'm going to go ahead and read the directional invitation and open our circle. So energy moves in circles. So I want you to imagine that extending out of your left hand is a beautiful white beam of light. It's about four to six inches in diameter, glowing, warm to the touch. It's very normal to feel your hand get warm. You might even give it a texture. And you will watch that beam of light out of your left hand extend, extend, extend toward the person who's seated next to you, either here physically in the space or online virtually in a circle, into their right hand. And then that energy will move up and down through their chakras and out of their left hand into the right hand of the person seated next to them. And in that way, the energy will move all the way around our circle tonight clockwise. So you can trace in your mind's eye that energy loop, that circle, traveling across continents and oceans. We have people in every time zone who join us. Keeping in mind our brothers and sisters tonight in the Southern Hemisphere who are venturing into darkness now. This is their winter solstice. So we honor you and recognize your journey as well, holding the other half of that, of that circle with us tonight. And that wide beam of light will come back to you in your right hand. And when it does, you'll be holding the circle with me. Let that energy come into your right hand, up your right arm, to your right shoulder. Let it just flood your body with love and acceptance, with all of that solar energy that we're channeling tonight, with all of that power that we're working with. Pull in that energy and let it remind you of who you are, what's possible for you, what you're capable of. Such good energy to feel it now. And with that, our circle is open. So stay right where you are. I'm going to read the um, invitation to the four directions. This is a new one tonight. I just wrote it for tonight's ritual, but I will post it in our full moon Facebook group as a document that you can download. So if you don't have to take notes or anything, it'll be there for you. Bless you if you'd like to use it after tonight. Between day and night, we gather and seek the wisdom of the elders, the ancients, the guides, the ancestors, and humbly in your presence. We seek the knowledge we are ready to integrate, for now is the time. We are promised no tomorrows, so this is the hour of magic. Now is the moment of possibility. Gatekeepers of the four directions, we thank you for turning your gaze toward us this evening. We honor your sacred presence and thank you, for you are welcome here. Our first call to the direction of east, this is element of air, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, ones who breathe new life into being. Air, move us tonight and guide us toward the golden dawn of new possibility, where our souls take flight and our wings expand. Every cell of our body aligns with infinite potential, and we manifest our soul's true calling. Eagle, spirit totem of the east, teach us to soar upon your mighty wings. Here in the east, we rise to meet a greater purpose, a louder calling, a deeper understanding, and we ascend without fear. Knowing that our wings are strong, the air is smooth, our flight is assured, our movements guided. We do not fly alone. Winds of the East, air elementals, guardian spirits, and all who reside in this quadrant, hear our prayer for safe new beginnings tonight. A call to the direction of South, element of fire, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and ones who fearlessly breathe fire. Fire move us and guide us toward the release of anything we no longer need. Allow us to burn clean through the old beliefs, the fears, hesitations, anxieties, and challenges, and reveal a new face of the future, one in which we find and embrace our full power. Coyote, spirit totem of the South, teach us to move with agility and speed, acknowledging the playful aspects of our lives. Here in the South, we let everything be transformed, transmuted, cleaned, cleared away. Nothing is ours forever. And the clarity that comes from destruction is the greatest gift we are given once we let the fear go. What is burned away was never ours to have in the first place. 
fires of the south, fire elementals, guardian spirits, and all who reside in this quadrant, hear our prayer for clearing and help us receive the new and shed the old with grace tonight. I call to the direction of west, element of water, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and those who swim in the depths without fear. Water move us, flowing with us, toward a complete reconnection with all of our emotions, the love, the rage, the peace, the anger, the passion, the fury, and teach us to allow all things, resisting nothing. Flowing downstream much like your fish and sea creatures, show us the way. Here in the West, we are in a state of non-resistance to growth, and all that we released in the South washes away with your waves and tides. We watch it all flow away from us, knowing that in its place our greatest dreams and joys are already flowing toward us. Hope rests in your deepest waters. Waves of the South, water elementals, guardian spirits, and all who reside in this quadrant, hear our prayer for emotional healing. Help us to allow what must come and what must go with no resistance based in fear. I call to the direction of North, element of Earth, <coughs> Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, and Bear, who moves gently and silently in the dark. Earth, ground us, catching us in your deepest roots, embracing us in your tree limbs, nurturing us in your mossy womb. Connect with us to all that has ever been. Here is where we are with you, and here is where we will one day return, bone to bone, dust to dust. You await our return. Here in the North, we know we are safe, loved, held, nurtured, and part of a much larger matrix of energy that surpasses all mortal understanding. We are part of your great web, Gaia, and we surrender to the path you carve for us through the dark of your forests. Let us take rest in your sanctuary in the north, where there is all knowledge of all time, and it is available for us to find. Trees of the north, earth elementals, guardian spirits, and all who reside in this quadrant, help us rest more deeply and trust in our own safety, our own security, our own wisdom. Remind us how small we are, how vast you are, and how many blessings exist in the space between us. My wish for you tonight, as it always is, that the delicate and precious balance of these four elements will make itself known to you tonight and always. And together we say, Amen, Aho, so it is. <coughs> Did you like it? Oh, good. Got to keep it fresh and exciting. <laughs> Okay. All of the ones I've ever written are in the Facebook group as documents. So, you know, some people really have a favorite in the original, which is great. But I do think it's fun to kind of incorporate new, you know, new syntax and new vocabulary and new ways of thinking about these elementals into your practice. So I'm glad you like it. Okay, are you ready? So I am going to light my candle. And you are welcome to light your candle. I have fire. Does anyone need fire? You got fire? I have fire. <laughs> I'm seated next to an Aries. <laughs> I should know better. I know, right? Yeah, I know, right? I know. Fire. Okay. As we light all these candles, it's already a thousand degrees in here, so now we're going to get it on fire. Okay. Woo. Okay. I'm going to take some of my Asherah perfume, and I'm also going to take a little bit. Actually, the Asherah is still moving around. My intention was to take actually the Frigg perfume, because I'm going to build a bridge between this month and next. From one creation mother goddess to the next. And when you add your perfumes to the candles, um, it diffuses them. Did you know that? You just don't want to pour it on the wick because obviously you're going to, you know, you know, you know, blow your candle out. But just adding a little bit to the, to the wax, it adds all the energy, even if it's a different energy, to that candle, which is really cool. Okay. Jane says, do you have air conditioning? I do. <laughs> it's on full blast, but this room is packed. We've got serious energy and body heat going on in here. Okay. Roll your shoulders back. Get back into that nice, 
quiet, centered, connected position, hands on your knees, palms facing up. When I lived in San Francisco, there was a little metaphysical shop that I would go to, a quick story. And this man um, crafted his own incenses. He died while, this is, I was moving back down here. So he's not, he doesn't, he's not around anymore and his store really isn't around anymore. It's very sad actually, because he was a fixture in the 60s and 70s. The Sword in the Rose, yeah. He was a fixture in the metaphysical community up there. Janis Joplin shop there. I mean, he was just, and he was magical. I would just go in there to be near him. Um, I took my very much non metaphysically oriented sister there one time, and she walked in and turned around and walked out. She was like, okay, well, that's not for me. Um, I just thought it was very, very magical. Um, and so one day I was in and I said, you know, I don't know what incense I need. Like a lot of you come to me, you know, like, I don't know what I need. And he looked at me and he said, you need Asherah. I'll never forget that. And I said, Asherah. And he said, yes, because she's the queen of heaven. And I said, well, I know what to do with a Ganesha incense. I know what to do with an Isis incense. I don't know what to do with an Asherah incense. And he said, so what do you do with the most powerful goddess in the entire universe? And I said, probably first offer respect. And he said, yes, first you, you give a gesture of respect. And then what do you do? You know, what do you think she can offer you? And I said, probably a blessing is an abundance. And he said, that is what she is. She, she is the, the goddess who gives the blessing, the blessing, like with a capital B. So I thought that was really beautiful. And I was meditating on him. He was just an incredible, incredibly wise soul. Now, he was very in, into the Kabbalah. And so he was talking to me about Asherah. You know, Asherah's symbol is that tree of life. Remember from um, the Siddharata last month? That's her symbol. And so she is the queen of all of those archangels, you know, and that's her, that is her domain. Those le seven levels of heaven, that is her entire domain. Very powerful energy. So we won't go into all of that now for the, our purposes, but I want you to think about that conversation with, with him. So what, what would you do with the most powerful goddess of all time? And I didn't know, but I know now, about how she's inflected across every tradition and pantheon in the world. Did you know about that? Okay. Just close your eyes, roll your shoulders back. So in keeping with that, that narrative, as we come close this evening to Asherah, working with her, connecting with her energy, we should first offer gratitude and thanks for the energy that she will share with us this evening. And to bow before the history of all that is female and feminine in the universe, because that entire narrative of creation begins with her and ends with her. Bowing to our own power, understanding that we are her. We are her daughters. We are her children. We are her sons. Asher had 70 sons, and from those sons, all other sons are born. So first, a gesture of thanks. And I want you to think about one place or part in your life. A relationship, might be one of your children, could be your job. It's going to be so different for each of you. But I want you to think of one part of your life right now that really could use the deepest, most profound blessing. And yes, I want you to choose one. I'm not asking yet, but I can hear it in my mind. <laughs> One aspect, one relationship, one situation in your life that could use the most profound blessing. And in your mind, I want you to pull up the clearest possible image of that person or that relationship. If it's your, if it's your job, I want you to pick, you know, pull up just an image of the place and the work that you do and the people that you work with. If it's your child, just pulling up an image of that child and of you with that child, whatever it is for you. And Asherah, we come before you this evening with a humble request for your blessing upon this part of our lives. We ask for your mother energy here to wrap your maternal arms around us and bless us from that aspect of you. We ask for your creative blessing 
view as the primary creative force in the universe, allowing us to feel that sense of creativity and connection to you. As one who knows love deeply, we ask for our blessings of love upon this circumstance in our life. I want you to just imagine her hand over that part of your life, that place in your life. And lean into what this feels like. You know, so many times it's hard to imagine what it would be like for, for someone on the other side, someone in that spirit realm, to really be looking out for us. It's hard to trust that that's possible. But I want you to imagine this, this sweeping energy of love and blessing and connection being sent to your life right now. And just for a moment, just be in a place of receiving that. Not questioning, just allowing, being in a state of gratitude for that. And now I want you to focus your thoughts for just a moment on what that part of your life will look like with this blessing. Is it deeper happiness? Is it more fulfillment? Is it a deeper sense of peace? Is it not being alone anymore? Is it not being sad anymore? Is it feeling healthy and well in your body again? And then just one more time, giving thanks for the blessings that are on the way. And you might just quietly in your mind's eye, just ask Asherah if she has any symbols, anything to offer you, a word or a phrase or a symbol or a talisman to represent these blessings, a sign if you would like one, something that you can look for. You might ask if there's anything you need to do to support what's coming for you. And now I want you to just slowly let that image of that part of your life just kind of pixelate and disappear for a moment. Once you feel like you've really connected with that area and the blessing and allowing Asherah to connect with you. Let that image in your mind clear away, sort of wipe that slate. And now, not only as the mother of, of the universe really who offers these blessings, but also as one who has the ability to see the future and to discern our fate. I want you to close your eyes and stay in that place and call upon Asherah to show us some part of what's ahead for us between tonight, Solstice 2016, and Winter Solstice 2017. We felt really guided to make it for the next 6 to 18 months. And just let your mind go clear for just a moment, just inviting her in to show you something about the future that you need to know tonight. If you have a question, just asking the question quietly in your mind. And when you ask the questions, notice how many answers come in feelings. You might see a word, but you might also just have a sense of a feeling, a yes or a no.
and take just one more minute here. such a beautiful thing I can sense this I can sense the energy of the group and there's such a there's such a maternal connection between her energy and ours almost a reassuring not to be so afraid not to be so anxious And now take just a moment in this place to ask if there are any symbols, anything she wants to show you, anything she wants to offer you. A lot of times the goddesses will um, offer a talisman or a symbol or a word you know, that you're used to, to use as a mantra. Anything she wants to leave with you tonight that will be helpful on this next 18 month journey. And just take a moment to offer gratitude. Just a quiet word of thanks in your mind for the blessing, for the information, for the guidance. You can invite her to continue to dialogue with you in dream time if you would like. A lot of times that's very effective just to say that your dream space is open to her if she wishes to continue to communicate with you. And I can feel her just sort of backing up from our, from our group, just sort of observing. And just take one more moment. You know, it's really beautiful to be in this space where you're really deeply connecting and you've gotten your mind quiet just to receive the messages. Just taking a moment just to experience that. Your body in this state can heal itself truly. If you can, if you can come to this place, where you really just align and connected and receiving and not in a state of anxiety, just feeling that peace, it's so healing for your body. And as she departs from us, which I can feel, just taking a moment to feel our connection to each other. One of the questions I was receiving as I was in the meditation with you is how can we be a blessing to each other? And when you're ready, just begin to wiggle fingers and toes, move all your shoulders a little bit, turn your head from side to side. Just bringing your energy and your attention back to this moment where we are. Hmm. What a beautiful comment. Naomi in the feed said, she feels like home. This is who I've been praying to all along. She has many faces, yeah? Oh, good. Hmm. I 
what I love is our blinds are closed and the sun is just so we've got the, the masculine balancing all the feminine right now. Some you know there there is, and I'm just reading the comments in the feed, but there's a lot of comments in the feed about healing, feeling like some part of mother wound is, is healing in this moment, some part is just like anchoring wounds from the past. I'm seeing a lot of comments in the feed. And it's it's really possible. Do you know? I mean, a lot can be healed in just a moment. So a lot of times it's just a, a minor shift. It might not feel like a lot to you, but that energy moving into a new pocket or a new place where you've had some trauma or some resistance can change your entire life. I really believe that. So I, I bow to each of you for that. So good. Okay. So what I would like to do is the, the solstice part of our ritual now while we're in the space. And would one of you mind just turning those blinds just a little tiny bit? I think I'm going to get a buggy there. I really appreciate it. I love the sun as a Leo. There comes a time. There, I, I can see myself now. Okay. It's my pleasure to hold this space for you. I can't even begin to tell you, truly, thank you for that. I can't begin to tell you how guided the choices of the goddesses for this year was. I don't think there's anything such, you know, like an accident, really. I think there are coincidences, but I was so guided and I wasn't doing research. I was just sensing and feeling my way into it. And every month there has been this link, you know, something that connected each of the goddesses to each other. Um, even goddesses you wouldn't think would have a link to each other, they do. Um, and I wasn't thinking about Asherah as the wife of God when I chose Frigg. Who was the wife of Odin? You seen that connection? You know, like it wasn't. So it's just very interesting to me how that happened. Um, we have a we're going to change pantheons quite dramatically to South America after July. Um, so I've got I've got two South American goddesses for you in the back half of the year, and I'm very excited about that. So just to give you a little heads up there, I'm really trying to be global too. You know, from the African to the Celtic to the to the Greek Roman to um, here with the um, the Canaanite and the ancient biblical, you know, the, um, the the Jewish, the Judaic tradition. Okay, so from this place, before we open our circle, if you have a ribbon, I would like for you to take it, and I would like for people in the room to share. So if you want to just take a moment, maybe you can pass the basket around or however it makes sense to do that. This is how you're going to work with your intention for tonight. So. I take intention really seriously, and I want you to set an intention tonight for the next six months. And I want you to set one. So could you cut 50 ribbons and set 50 intentions? You sure could. You overachievers out there could really just go do that. <laughs> you sure could do that. I don't want you to do that. <laughs> I think I cut enough for everybody to have one. We'll cut more if we need to. One. And I know it's really hard, but what's the big one in your heart? You know, like... I, and here's how I want you to think about it. Because for me, winter solstice is always a little sad. Even though you're right around Christmas and the, you know, everybody's got the decorations and stuff up, my heart's a little sad at you. Because it's sort of like a reckoning of the year, do you know? And it's like there's always certain things that just didn't happen. And my heart aches a little bit. And what's, it's interesting because I'm trying to teach my kids about these traditions. And whereas most of the winter holidays are all about joy and celebration, this one is rightfully, I think, a little bit about reflection um, and assessment and awareness, right? So here's the way to think about it. On December 21st, when we're sitting here together for your ritual, crying a little bit about our year, um, what, what would sort of make your heart ache most if it didn't happen? It's a different way of thinking about it, right? Like sort of like what do you want or what do you not want kind of thing? Um, that will tell you something about what you really, really want. Okay? Anybody have any questions about setting this intention? Go with your heart. Okay. Just let your heart lead you. But really think about six months from now when we're all sitting here, what is it that you really want? And you have to remember that intentions, when you set them, you always have to give permission for the universe to manifest your intention in alignment with the highest good of all. Okay. <laughs> that was the cutest sneeze I've ever <laughs> So, 
my god. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Yes, it can be. In fact, the sa same questions in the feed right now. Like, uh, I want to be loved for the first time. Like, deep, like known, seen. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic intention. Again, when you set it free, you're setting it free to come at imperfect and divine time. Because here's here's the shitty thing about soulmates. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the shitty thing. Here's the shitty pickle about soulmates. Um, uh, nothing worse than when they show up at the wrong time. Like, oh, there you are. Shit. <laughs> right? Um, no, it's true. Everybody wants to see the person who sneezed so cute. I won't put you on camera. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they want to see who that came out of. I know. It's so cute. It's the cutest thing. Okay. So. Um, a beautiful intention would be, I would love to connect with my soulmate in perfect time so that I can not only receive my soulmate, but enjoy him or her fully. Because timing, there was actually a thing on Pinterest that, that was so funny. It was like, um, the best thing in the world is a soulmate at the right time. Speaking as someone who's had a soulmate at the wrong time. Okay? Yes. Um, if you're Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, so she's asking, what if it involves somebody else? So the good ethics of magic, and there are people who don't follow this, by the way, and that, you know, be that as it may, my ethics of magic dictate that I don't, I don't set intentions for anyone else. And if my intention impacts other people, that's where it's really important to say, I wish for this, but I wish it to happen in alignment with the highest good of all involved. Because the reality is you don't want anything that isn't in alignment with the highest good of all involved. You may think that you do. Um, and that's part of the reason why people say, oh, cord cutting this and that. I don't cut cords. Um, because I, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm going through life and sort of connecting with people in ways that I shouldn't necessarily. Because I, when I set an intention, I'm always really, really clear. It's sort of like, it was really interesting, um, one of my early teachers was talking about money, how people will set an intention, I just want bucks, okay? But they didn't realize that if you just set that intention and you leave it up to the universe, what if it comes to the inheritance from a parent who dies? Whoops. Really, do you just want bucks? Um, versus, you know, I would like to experience prosperity in a way that's in divine alignment with, with all beings involved, and it comes to me um, from sources that will bring happiness and joy. Or whatever you think of that. Do we need more ribbon? Yeah. Are we? Wow. Yeah, would you mind? There's like a little, little ton of it in the um, in the kitchen. Ray's going to make your ribbon dreams come true real quick. <laughs> She's not going to set anything on fire. Um, okay. So, that's just a little like little bit of tut you know, tutorial on how to set intentions, but you really have to think about that. And that money one always stayed with me because that was a really profound example of like, oh, do you really want what you think you want? And and you're not going to be able to do all the caveats. You know what I mean? Like you could caveat all day long and you're still not going to catch everything. And so that's why the universe is very wise. And so if you leave it to the universe and say, I leave it to you, universe, how this happens, when this happens, but I want it in perfect time in alignment with the highest good of all who are involved, the universe will manifest that. Now, that may mean that your soulmate doesn't show up by December 31st at midnight. Because maybe your soulmate's married right now. <laughs> okay? Just saying. Um, I know, and I'm actually not kidding. You know, it's like your soulmate might be a little busy this year. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. All right, so I want you to um, take a moment when you receive your ribbon, which everybody in the room is about to receive all the ribbons. Mine's really pretty. Leo, Leo asks him. Um, I want you to sit and for me it's a meditation. Close your eyes and I just sort of like touch the ribbon, you know, play with play with my ribbon. Um, I sort of imagine like pixelating almost the intention. Almost and I sometimes I think of like a CNN ticker, like all the words of my intention. <laughs> and I imagine them just written on the ribbon. You can actually write on your ribbon if you want. I'm not going to, but I can imagine the words. Okay. So take a moment, get very, very focused and quiet in your mind, work with your ribbon. 
And I say touch it because repetitive action becomes meditative. You know, it's almost like working with a mala, right? Where you're like rubbing the, rubbing the beads. And just really think about what it is for the next six minutes. Sometimes if you get quiet enough, the universe will guide you. It'll add a word or take out a word for you. <laughs> the universe is a really good editor of intentions, so, so you know, let the voices come. Okay, and if you want. I always take things to another level because I'm a Leo. Um, you can actually anoint your ribbon with uh, perfume. So I'm going to take Asherah and just anoint my um, my ribbon with it. I also have my Litha, my Solstice perfume. So I'm going to anoint. It's nice when it's in a roller bottle. You can just roll that right on there. <laughs> I'll pass these around if anybody doesn't have anything. Who may need Asherah? Yeah. You want Ashra? Yeah. Okay. I'll, at least I'll take a little bit and we'll pass it back around. My ribbon smells really good right now. Yeah, if you, um, Trinity has a question, can I get a litha sticker from my bottle? Just um, send me a, um, send me an email at magic and I will send you a label. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll send you another label. It's not a big deal. Happy to do that for you. Of course. Okay. Now, um, what you do with your ribbon that you have consecrated, so that's what you just did, um, with the energy is you can you can wear it. I mean, you can tie it on your wrist, and I might just do that for now. Um, you can, um, I recommend tying it on a, on a living thing, maybe to a tree in your yard. Is a beautiful thing to do. It's sort of like a prayer tie, right? Have you done prayer ties before? It's very much like a prayer tie or an intention tie. I'm sort of tying mine on my wrist. And I want you to um, do this within 24 hours so that you have the energy. You'd be impressed what's happening right now. I'm actually doing this on myself. Yeah, I probably will sleep with mine on, you know, if you want, if you choose to wear it. I quite like it. I feel very Wonder Woman with like my armbands kind of right now. Um, yeah, Chrissy says she used ABR. That'd be a really good one actually, because ABR is a manifestation perfume. Totally, totally. So good. Okay. Now I want you to close your eyes once you're done with your ribbon. There's people working on the ribbon situation right now. So first things first. Would you close your eyes? And this is, this is the, really the key to it all, right, with manifestation, is not just asking for the thing and then, you know, sending it up to the universe. I do in your mind's eye, I want you to or just quietly within and want you to say, I'm asking for X, Y, Z in perfect time and alignment with the highest good of all involved. And you just take a moment to say that in your mind. Okay, so it is. <clears throat> okay, so shall it be. And then I want you to close your eyes and I really want you to imagine if everything that you just set the intention for comes to fruition okay, in the next six months. I want you to imagine what that looks like, what that feels like. See it like it's happening already. What will it look like for you to feel happier at your job? What will it look like for you to spend more time with your kids? What will it look like for you to sleep better at night? Whatever your, I mean, because your intention can be simple or it can be huge. What will it look like for you to feel love for the first time? What will that feel like? And I mean down to the details, like what does your skin look like? What does it feel like in your hands? What can you see where you are? Furniture, walls, 
details, details, details. And so, because we have the benefit of being in this big circle together and harnessing all that energy, I'll say out loud that collectively we ask for these things for each other. I ask for it for you, you ask for it for me, we ask for it for each other. In divine time and in divine alignment with the highest good of all involved on every level. And so together we say, so it is, so it is. So it shall be, so it has always been. So it has always been. I believe, I believe, I believe. You, you will not find someone who has more faith than I do. I believe. I've seen big miracles happen. So when people come here to Sage Goddess or you know talk to me online or whatever and they're not in a place to believe, that's okay, I'll believe for you. And then you'll go believe for somebody else. I think that's how we change the world a little bit. When it comes to our presidential election, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I believe. I, I do believe. That is, that is the last, by the way, the last and only political thing you hear me say. <laughs> uh, I don't do that, but I do have little prayer moments. Yeah? I do. It's, and it's hard to believe sometimes. I mean, I, I, I'm really blessed because I have this presence online and I, I've been able to connect with people who knew victims of the Pulse shooting in Orlando, one-to-one, yeah. uh, -one, right? I've been able to, like, they saw posts that I put out there and they commented and sent messages and stuff. I mean, to me, that's a huge blessing. I was actually able to reach them and they saw the candle that we made. Um, and it's hard. I mean, they're in a hard place saying, it's hard for me to believe right now, you know, when things are just so senseless. So... Um, and I know that, you know, do I think, do I think that at the end of the day, there's a divine organizing framework for your life? I really do. Um, and I think some of it is just going to unfold for you in ways that are destined for you. But I do think you co-create and I do think, you know, I often think of it this way. If you were the universe, okay, who would you give blessings to? Like if you could sort of choose, it's a weird way of thinking about it, but would you give blessings to the person who was like, I believe. I don't know how I believe. I don't know why I believe, but I'm just going to keep believing, <laughs> you know? And who was really faithful, like, because things take time. I mean, even with me building stage goddess and stuff, which I really wanted to have that happen, but it took years, right? It wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to go quit my day job that I hate and go do this. That's not, that's not how it goes, right? There's little dreams in your heart or dreams of health, because I wasn't in a state of health, I'm like really dreaming for that, but like everything was telling me that that wasn't possible, right? So you gotta you really believe, I don't know why I believe, but I'm gonna believe. Or do you give the blessings to people who are like, well, I lit that candle and I blew it out and nothing happened. So anyway, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> and then I lit it again, I tried, I tried one more time and I blew it out and still nothing happened. So I'm not gonna believe. You know, it's like the universe, I think, sort of um, tests you sometimes. I really do. And if you're in a testing period, just know that we've all been through the testing periods. And you can ask us, like, hey, how long was your testing period? A couple of shitty pick of years, right? <laughs> but it does come to an end. And the blessings do come. And I think if you're faithful, that that is a huge deal. So I guess that's my maiden message to you tonight is believe. Because I do think blessings will come to you if you do. And you guys got to hold tight and have faith. And that's why we have a community, so that we can hold a space for each other, you know? It's so much easier when you're not doing it alone. And you're not doing it alone. Because you're here. Okay, so I'm going to blow out our Asherah candle with great thanks to the Mother Goddess and all your manifestations. I'm grateful to her for, for creating a feminine face of the divine for me as a feminine face of the divine. I appreciate that. And then roll your shoulders back, close your eyes. We're going to close our circle. It's kind of nice having this little bit of extra time. It just feels spacious. Usually I'm like doing a mad dash, so it's kind of nice. Thank you for being patient. If you like it, we could go over. You know, we could plan to have longer rituals. But most times we won't need it. We're going to do a two for tonight, so that's why we have a little bit extra time. 
So when we opened our circle, the circle came back to you in your right hand. You're going to release it now from your right hand. Which is always hard for me to do. <laughs> always hard for me to do. So we release it knowing that we will return to the space together. The space is always here for you. I'm watching that circle of energy unwind, unwind, unwind all the way around the circle. Counterclockwise, with your shins, as we say, until it comes back to you in your left hand, where it left you in the first place. And then, when it's back to you in your left hand, I like to turn my left hand upside down and send the energy that we've raised tonight down into the center of the earth. Just imagine it like a beam of light that you're sending down through layers of rock and soil and time down into the molten center of the earth, which is composed mostly of hematite. Did you know that? Um, sending it down to those molten layers, anchoring it there, knowing that the universe, in its wisdom, knows what to do with this energy that we've raised. Energy is not created, nor is it destroyed, so it will go where it needs to go, but we're not holding it. And with that, our circle is closed. I will thank the Guardians of the North for their service to the circle. Thank you for your wisdom. The Guardians of the West for their service to the circle and their watery ways. Thank mm -hmm. you for your service to the circle. Guardians of the South, fire energy tonight in a big way. The water holds. Thank you for your service to the circle. The Guardians of the East, thank you for showing us a brave way to a new future and to whatever is on the horizon for us in the next six to 18 months, which, months, which I think is a lot of blessings. I really do. Okay, so um, we are moving on. It's so funny, like as soon as the ritual ends, it's like cue frig. I feel like the energy just totally moves to even the next goddess, like she's waiting in the wings, like and frig is next. She's right here. You know, what's really cool is we did so we designed these candles. A lot of credit goes to Ray and her team, actually. A lot of credit. Um, Ray really wanted the candles that when you sit them next to each other, it looks like they're in the same room. And if you turn it this way, um, their hands are at the same level, so they touch. They're partners. Is that cool? And then they make out. <laughs> um, Look, the Norse were very sexy people, my friends. Uh, the Egyptians have nothing on the Norse. Um, so, so a couple things. So, um, because there's two kits, and I think they go together, and we're going to be working both with Odin and Frigg next month, um, you have the option of buying both for less. And so that's on the website. And from this very minute until the end of the day tomorrow, is it midnight tomorrow? Solstice 15. 15% 15 off the entire site as well as everything downstairs if you're here in person. Okay, so if you want to get a kit, this is the time to do it. Um, but yeah, I know it's fun. And a lot of you love the Odin, which makes me really happy, because you've been waiting for, like, you know, you're interested in the goddesses, but you're like, are we going to talk about the gods? Um, and Odin is just such big magic, to me anyway. So I'm excited. So we're going to work with them both. For the first time, we will work with a duo next month. Um, and like I said, I'll be throwing runes and teaching you a little bit about rune magic. Um, everybody who's here in the room is going to walk home with a room. I know. So there'll be a little gemstone room for you, which hopefully will be a lot of fun. Um, so I'm going to be having everybody choose their room. We're going to talk about the rooms, the interpretation of the rooms and stuff. I, just, I love the North Carolina. I'm very excited to be turning my attention there next month. So save the date. I know, power hashtag power couple. I love it. We need to come up with a, like, a, a name for them, like friggin' or something. I don't know. That sounds really bad, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, really bad. Yes. If it's automatic, it's frig. Okay. Yeah. And then you get the Odin with a 15% off. That's right. So um, there are a lot of people who are on the automatic thing where they receive the kits automatically. And so you're getting frig and you want to buy the Odin kit. Okay, so Kavita has a good question before we go. I'm so glad. Gabby says it was the most amazing experience ever. Love me for that. Um, Kavita says, what do we do with the ribbon after the ritual? I will tell you that for me, so some people like to burn these or bury them, give them to the earth, okay? Um, this is a very non-organic material. 
I only like to give things to the earth that the earth can eat, okay? Um, so this is a very non-organic material. I keep these forever. Um, I have a little manzanita branch in my, my little sacred room because I love manzanita wood. And it has malas hanging on it and stuff. So I will just tie this to my little tree there because I will always remember this. You know what I mean? Like I try to make the ribbon distinct enough where it's like every time I look at that, I'll think that was 2016. You know what I mean? That's where I was right then. Um, I do recommend anointing your ribbons with oils. They do hold the scent. That ribbon will smell like that oil for a long time. Um, it's actually really a fun way to carry your scent with you if you don't want to put it on your skin. You can use put it on your clothes or put it on ribbons and carry it with you. Um, but hopefully that is helpful. My husband and I were kissing when you said that, and I laughed mid-kiss. That's really cute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's going to get sexy time when we turn to the north. Um, and all the Viking fans out there are going to be really, really excited. I'm a huge Vikings fan, so very excited to talk about that. All right, many blessings, everybody. Enjoy. Get out if you still have sunlight. Put your stone out, at least for a little while. Leave it out under the full moonlight tonight. You will have charged it in both the male and the female energy space. And so, and then that will become a power tool for you for the rest of 2016. I wish you every blessing. Everybody in the room, everybody online, every blessing for you in perfect time. I really do. May it be so. May it be so. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you next month.